Hi, I'm Dr. Judy Morgan. I've been spending this morning doing some research and I'm looking at um, potential side effects and problems associated with the use of topical and oral um, flea and tick preventatives and heartworm preventatives in our pets. And I've found some astounding and really disturbing information that I think a lot of us don't really think about when we use these chemicals for our pets. So a couple of things I'd like you to just sort of mull around and think about. First of all, if you are going to use topical products in your pets or oral products for flea and tick prevention, please read the label completely before applying the product. It's amazing how many cats are poisoned because owners use a product that specifically states for use on dogs only, do not use on cats. Cats are much more sensitive to a lot of the chemicals, particularly the permethrins, and it will kill your cats. Rabbits are very sensitive to fipronil, which is the product uh, contained in, um, I believe, Paristar and Frontline and a lot of the, the newer products that are showing up in over-the-counter situations. So please read labels very carefully. Ask your veterinarian which product they recommend and what they think is the safest for your individual pet. Even if you don't plan on buying it from your veterinarian, I don't really care where you buy the products, but please ask me first which one would be the safest product for your pet. Um, just because something is labeled as natural or organic doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be safe, again, for your particular pet. Every pet's an individual, and every one of them can have a reaction to different products. For instance, I love the cedar oil products for um, prevention of fleas and ticks and flies and mosquitoes and all that kind of stuff for my pets. I don't use it very often, but when I need it, that's the product that I will go to very commonly. I went on a trail ride with my horses yesterday, and I sprayed myself with the cedar oil. It worked phenomenally well. However, when I sprayed cedar oil on two of my horses, they developed a horrible reaction. They lost their hair. They blistered. Their skin peeled. It was horrible. It took weeks and months of healing to get my horses back to normal after one application. So don't think just because it's natural or organic that it's going to be correct for your particular pet. Most of those products are not absorbed into the bloodstream. They're stored in the hair follicles. They're stored in the sebaceous glands, which are the oil glands in the skin. Um, but some of the products are absorbed internally. And think about the fact that your pet is grooming himself by licking all the time. So even though supposedly it's not being absorbed into the bloodstream, your pet's ingesting some of that every time he licks and grooms himself. So he's got to be ingesting low levels. And what about you and your children? Do you pet your dog? Do you hug your dog? Do you kiss your dog? Do you maybe do kind of this after you pet your dog? Are, how much of those chemicals are you also absorbing into your system? And here were some really interesting facts that I discovered while I was doing some research, and it scares the dickens out of me. Particularly in feedlot situations and in third world country situations where parasites are a big problem, uh, screw worm flies, which can devastate cattle herds, are a big problem. And so ivermectin and moxidectin and all of those new, newer um, chemical dewormers are being used in large quantities and in slow release products so that these uh, livestock species are pooping out the chemicals and the um, metabolites of those chemicals all the time. And so that chemical stays active in the stool and is then uh, rinsed down into the soil every time it rains or as the stool starts to disintegrate. It reaches the waterways and it's causing huge problems. We have fish die-offs. We have um, killing of really beneficial species. I know we all hate flies and we hate beetles and we hate mosquitoes and we, we hate all those microorganisms that might live in the soil. But guess what? A lot of those guys are beneficial. I personally hate wasps and bees, but wasps kill a lot of other insects that are bad for our environment. By killing off the beneficial wasps, we are causing more problems with the non-beneficial guys. So everything 
that we put into ourselves and into our pets and into the livestock in this country and in this world has another effect down the chain. And I originally started this, this video because I wanted to talk about you know side effects to the individual pet on a cellular level. But then I started doing this research and found out, you know what, it's a more global problem with all the chemicals that we're using. And I just want to leave you with this last little thing. We think about the neurotoxic effects of a lot of these chemicals, um, particularly in the Shelties and the Collies, because everybody knows that they're um, more susceptible to the ivermectins and the moxidectins and the uh, milbamycin and all the chemicals that are in those products. And it has to do with the MDR1 gene, and they're more susceptible to neurotoxicity from those products. However, long-term use of these chemicals in every study shows huge endocrine effects. What's our endocrine system? Those are the glands in the body, the thyroid glands, the adrenal glands, the pituitary glands. Why are we seeing a lot more endocrine disease in our pets? I get phone calls and I diagnose every single day in my practice multiple cases of thyroid disease and Cushing's disease. Why are we seeing so much more of this? Well, I think we need to look at all these chemicals that we're using on our pets. I don't see Cushing's disease in my holistic client pets where the pets have never been exposed to vaccinations, processed foods, um, flea and tick and heartworm medications. Those pets do not develop those long-term endocrine disorders. They do not develop thyroid disease. They do not develop Cushing's disease. So really think hard about all those chemicals that you want to throw into your pets because I think a lot of this long-term damage that we're seeing in our individual pets, in our own health, in our environment, are being caused by the misuse and overuse of all these chemicals. So don't think about just what's happening to your individual pet. Think about what's happening on a global level and um, decrease the use of these products. Really think long and hard about it and look for more natural alternatives. And remember that natural isn't always safe and any product can have a side effect on an individual pet. So if you have questions, post them to my page after the video. We'll try to go through them. But if you start looking online and look at the side effects and the research, you're going to be scared too. You're going to stop using this stuff. I don't use these chemicals on my pets. I will not use these chemicals on my pets. I will sit there and pick every flea off if I have to. But the good news is we don't have flea problems at our house because everybody's healthy and they have good immune systems and they fight it off themselves. Take care of yourselves, take care of your pets, and please take care of our environment.